Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for being awake. And I hope you're enjoying the work camp so far. Uh, it's been great for me, for sure. Um, my name is Chris Panjarov. I work for SagGround for eight years. And I'm managing uh, mostly uh, pretty much everything we do about WordPress in terms of services, uh, partnerships, and um, transfers of bigger customers. And uh, performance and speed uh, has been probably my favorite topic because I think it's uh, really important to have a fast and very well optimized website. Um, today I'll be talking mostly about what's new uh, and the new stuff we're using, um, but I'm still going to mention some of old and well-established um, tools, services, uh, when it comes to optimizing a WordPress website. So I'd like to begin with uh, benchmarking, which is really the first and most important thing in that process. Um, and every, I think everybody should spend some of their time to do as many benchmarking as possible with their website and run it through as many tools as possible they have in order to find out uh, where the slow parts what can be optimized, what can be improved, and at the end of the day, uh, stream off some precious few seconds from their loading times. Uh, the first thing I'm using when I start working on a website, and probably not many people are using it that way, is Firebug. Um, one of the mo my, probably my favorite tab here is the networking tab, because it shows you right away which resources are loaded and the sequence of them being quoted. So it's a really nice way to figure out if there is something that takes too much time to load. That can be a image too big, that can be a JavaScript too big and optimized, um, a, a JavaScript that blocks your, the rendering of your website. And it's right there, it's right in your browser. You don't have to install anything, you don't have to use a third party service for it. So use your Firebug when you when you start working on your websites and see how it loads, see how much how, how much time it takes to locally load the website. Because for example, if you're in Italy and your customers are from here, that would be a pretty good check, right? Um, when it comes to benchmarking, uh, GT Metrics is my favorite tool when it comes to going through checklists of things that you have or have not done on a website. It combines, it actually combines two checks. The first one is from uh, Google PageSpeed and the second one is Yahoo's YSLO. So when you run your test for it, you'll get um, basically two scores and again a waterfall similar, similar to the one um, in the Firebook. Uh, the, the two different tests, the Google PageSpeed and the Yahoo's YSLO will show you a very big checklist of things that you have or haven't done on your website, like enabling gzip compression, um, minifying your CSS and JavaScript files, having uh, browser level caching, and so on. Uh, it's really a nice, and they have priority to those issues. So you'll see uh, a number of red, orange, and hopefully mostly green uh, checks being made by the two different uh, mechanisms. Uh, don't do any number chasing here. Uh, go for the end result. I have way too many people that say, I, I can't get a 100 out of 100 in Google page, but it doesn't make any sense. No one will give you a piece of chocolate or something. If your website loads in uh, a third of a second, you have done your job perfectly well, okay? Even if GT Metrics says you have 90 out of 100. Um, another very popular tool that's really useful is uh, the Ping Doms free tool. Um, I use it mostly because it allows you, uh, uh, by clicking on the settings, slightly different than the yellow background orange button, it allows you to choose uh, from where you, you can make the checks. So basically, mm, you can see how the page loads from, uh, from the United States, from Europe, from Asia. Uh, they have five different locations or something. Uh, which is really useful to see how how your scores is different in different places. Again, they they show you a um, number of uh, checks and your result uh, with uh, another 
great, like uh, 79 out of 100. Uh, that here is my personal unoptimized website, but it's okay because nobody reads it anyway. Um, now a few new things out there that I found, find particularly useful. The first thing is a tool that Sukuri recently launched. Is, it's Sukuri Performance. And it basically used its own CDN network to make checks of how fast your website loads from a lot of different locations. So for example, again, with my obsolete site, um, it's hosted in a, uh, on a server in Amsterdam. But, and as you can see, it loads perfectly well in the United States, in Europe, but there's a problem in Tokyo. And if you see that you have an issue loading the website in a region where you have customers, visitors, or readers in, uh, maybe you should do something about it. Uh, maybe figure, fi figure out which CDN you should use if, you, if you're not, or switch to a different one, or figure out what's the problem there. So it's a really good tool to see how your website loads across the world. Um, Blitz.io, uh, it's a paid service but it provides a lot of things. Um, in addition to the checks, similar to GTmetrix, Ping Dom, what, we, what, what we've talked about so far, um, they allow you to do stress tests on your website, and they're pretty good at simulating real life uh, usage of your pages. They can um, summon something, they can create peaks of uh, 200,000 visitors plus, they use a lot of different IP addresses. Uh, it's similar to Load Impact, if you're familiar with. And um, on top of that, they have a lot of different uh, developer tools to do tests of your code on top of that. But I'm mostly using them for stress testing a page. Um, if you have the budget, go check them out. Um, that was about benchmarking and few things server site that can be very good for your uh, pages, loading times, and performance in general. Uh, Nginx as a reverse proxy had great impact on the hosting industry overall. It's uh, probably the best caching mechanism out there. Um, a reverse proxy generally stores the complete um, HTML outcome of your website in the server's memory. So when somebody loads your page on the second time and it should be served with the cache content, it's been served before the request even reached the web, the web server. So uh, it's super fast. Um, it saves a lot of hosting resources and generally minimizes the load your entire website is causing on your machine. So if you ha can implement and utilize a reverse proxy on your on your server, use it. It's great unless you're serving cache content to people that shouldn't see cache content. It will have an amazing um, impact on your loading speeds. Varnish uh, is another uh, reverse proxy mechanism, basically, and uh, it does pretty much the same. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't use it a lot anymore, uh, mostly because in their free version they do not support SSL connections. And we'll talk about this later, but that's, that's a deal breaker for a lot of people. But if you A, can afford a paid version, or B, don't have an SSL certificate, you don't care about it, you can still use it and great, get great results out of Varnish too. Uh, CDM providers. Another thing to boost the performance of your website. Um, there's constantly something new that CDN providers tend to add to their service. So it's a good idea to track those and see what they're doing. Uh, because I, I think most of you know that by default, a CDN should clone your content in their different host nodes. And they just serve it to your visitors from the closest location. But on top of that, people add things like caching. They add another layer of protection from downtime to your site. For example, if your main server goes down, they keep serving cached content to different host nodes. And uh, 
generally it's a good idea to have a CDN even if you're using even if your visitors are mostly local just because you have another layer of protection uh, between your server and your visitors <coughs> HHVM uh, was introduced um, what probably a couple of years ago but it was it became recently very popular in the community and um, it's generally a virtual machine that stays on top of your PHP and uh, uses uh, just-in-time compilation. Uh, the thing is um, that it has huge effect. It's really nice um, when it comes to performance and loading speeds, but um, poorly written code may not work as well uh, with it, just because the tolerance for errors here is way lower. Um, what HHVM did when it was when it became popular and widely used is that it pushed forward, in my opinion at least, the development of PHP 7, which is awesome. Uh, PHP 7, uh, 7 has a lot of uh, new stuff implemented into it, a lot of improvements. They skipped number six for that, and uh, if you have the ability to use it, if your code supports it always try to to use PHP 7 it has internal opcode caching and generally if you uh, if you open a WordPress backend where the entire content is dynamic and there is not a lot of options to cache something and serve it faster uh, you'll notice a huge difference if you switch from PHP 5.6 even to 7 so if your code supports it, use it. It's it's really a huge performance boost. Um, HTTP2 became a huge news, and it's out there. It's happening, and most of the hosting companies are supporting it now. Um, it's an upgrade to 11-year-old protocol for transferring data. It's 11 years from the latest update, I think. And it does a lot of things, a lot of things have changed, it's binary now and so on, but probably the most um, important change, a new feature is that it supports multiplexing, which generally changes the way your server and your visitor communicate when it comes to loading resources. Uh, for example, you vote stumbled with, I believe, with uh, pages that just use too many plugins, uh, uh, too many JavaScript files, CSS files, and other resources. And uh, the entire loading of the page is being slowed because of that. Um, with HTTP2, it's much faster, and the high number of resources you try to load doesn't have such a negative effect on loading a page. Now, the thing is that um, even though uh, usage using uh, SSL is not um, forced by the HTTP2 uh, protocol itself, there is not a single modern browser that will run HTTP2 if the connection is unencrypted. So you have to have an SSL certificate and you have to force uh, an HTTPS connection. Um, if that used to be a problem because SL certificates cost money and not a lot of people can afford them, especially the EV ones and the more expensive ones. But now there's something called Let's Encrypt, which is a really nice project and um, we're happy to support it since day zero. And basically what Let's Encrypt does, it, it allows everybody to have their own free SSL certificate. Uh, a lot of hosting companies, including us from SiteGround, are starting doing um, tools to easily install it on your account, but you can practically use it everywhere. So take a look at it if you if you don't have a big budget, but still want to get the benefits of HTTP2 and better security. Um, another service that I started to love in the recent months is Elasticsearch. Um, Elasticsearch uh, provides a huge boost when it comes to database heavy websites. Um, I've used it uh, heavily in the last months and, and half with um, 
very big customer of ours having a WooCommerce website. And just to give you an example, um, he has like 100,000 orders of his product. And he has a WooCommerce with uh, about 10 additional plugins to that. And so each order stores about 50 records in the Postmate table. So if you multiply 100,000 by 50, that easily becomes 5 million uh, records in a single ta table. Now, every time you, he goes to his back end and he searches through his orders, you have to query that table to get that data. And um, we're talking about searches in the coupons and orders and including the front end search. Uh, another customer sells ladies shoes and he obviously has like 100,000 different ladies shoes. I didn't think that's impossible, but it is. People can have 100,000 different types of shoes, obviously. And multiply that number by the, by the number of rows each product has stores and add orders, and you have a good 10, 15, 20 gigabytes of a database. And searching in such a great amount of data isn't fast. Even on a very powerful server, you can't cache a lot of, of that, most of that content. And here comes Elasticsearch. Uh, it creates its own index. It's a service that runs on your server. And it works way faster than, than the native search within WordPress or WooCommerce. Um, if you can't have it on your server, they, ins they provide it as a service. So you can offload some data to their site and use their servers for, for searches. Um, now, a bit more about the things I often use when it comes to, comes to the WordPress app itself. Uh, WP Rocket, it's a paid plugin, and it's one of my favorite plugins. Uh, WP Rocket, it's a nice paid plugin. Um, the thing is, it provides a lot of things like caching, JavaScript and CSS minification combination, um, but they don't believe in having too many options. So it will either work for you great or will not work for you. Um, it's, it's, it's a good plugin, but if you're looking into a lot of options and if you want to control each part of the optimization process, it's not the thing for you. But if you have a pretty, pretty much more of standard WordPress app and you just want something that works, it's, it's great. I'm, um, I'm using another plugin often soon, which is auto-optimize. Uh, because I'm using Nginx as reverse proxy, I don't need to have any file caching uh, done by a WordPress plugin. Because serving content from the server's memory is way faster than everything a plugin can do. So uh, once the caching is handled by a re reverse proxy, I just have to take care of the other parts. And big part, big chunk of that is um, CSS and JavaScript files. So auto-optimize uh, auto uh, does a great job when it comes to minifying those. And it does just that. It doesn't have a lot of options, and it doesn't have one button optimize, optimize all. Uh, BG Lazy Load uh, is another plugin uh, I'd recommend you to try out if you have that type of website. It does lazy loading, uh, which pretty much means that if you have a page um, which is very image intensive. Um, images uh, on load, only the first and visible part of those images will be loaded. And the second and the following images will start loading uh, right after the user, user starts scrolling down. So you don't have to load every single image of the page before you see it. Um, advanced database cleaner. Got, it's a good plugin again. It gets updated very often. Supports um, it, it usually gets an update a few days after a WordPress update. Uh, it cleans stuff like um, old reviews of your posts uh, and all that obsolete data that you don't need on your database. And um, even if that data is not queried on a daily basis, even if it if having a bigger database with a lot of revisions in it will not slow down the performance of your website directly, it will bloat your database and everything like uh, optimizing the database, backing it up, restoring it and if you have to, will become 
uh, a slower process. So it's a good idea to have something like that and regularly clean the old and unused data from it. Uh, WCOI is a tool that I use a lot and I really love. And if you're a plugin developer, please start supporting WPCOI. Be a good person. Uh, basically, it's a common line interface for WordPress and the plugins that support it. And one of the things it does, it, you can easily optimize your database with it. It's like the same thing you could do with a uh, regular MySQL query or PHP My Admin. But the good thing is that you can script and you can set a cron job and do it like once every three days or include it into a broader script that does a lot of things. And it's a good thing to take a look at. Uh, most of the WordPress hosts have it or you can have it upon the request. So check whether you have access to WPCOI. It's great for automation, including updates and data, regular database optimization. Now, a few more examples before we, we come to the Q&A session. Uh, about your content, um, Imagify is a nice service, unfortunately paid, uh, about optimizing your images. They do uh, the optimizations on their servers, and you pay for each image that goes through that service. And uh, they're doing a really good job. And if you have the budget, I would recommend you doing this. They do all sorts of things like automatic resize, um, optimization of the images, and generally uh, can uh, skim off a lot of un unnecessary bytes out of them. Uh, EWW Image Optimizer does the same thing, but it works on your server. It works. Uh, uh, it's a great plugin. And uh, for example, I was doing the website of my interior designer who has been blogging every day for the past two and a half years, which produces something like uh, a bit under a thousand posts. And in each one of those posts, he has like uh, 20 to 35 to 40 images about different interior design thingies. And uh, each of those images has like four or five different thumbnail sites thumbnail sizes that's been generated. And uh, so this totally accumulates to something like uh, 200,000 images. And with EWW Image Optimizer, we've managed to lower the size of those images by like 40%. So A, your visitors will get the content loaded faster. B, you're saving time on your uh, space on your hosting account. And C, things like backups that everybody does regularly, right? will become faster. So that was pretty much it. And I'll be happy to answer if you have any questions. Thank you. Yes, sir. You mentioned uh, image optimizers. Have you tried uh, Kraken.io compared to the one you mentioned, and is there a difference? I haven't tried it myself. Okay, because there's, there's a lot coming out these days on image optimizers, and they seem to be all using different compressions with different results. Thank you. Um, when I when I do any sort of image optimization. I generally don't have the permission of the person I'm working on their website to screw up the quality of their images. So I do only uh, lossless optimization and just pray for the best when it comes to reducing the size. So as long as it removes all the necessary data from the image, like the, the fact it was taken by an iPhone or whatever camera and the GPS location of the image, and it does the best possible compression uh, without losing any quality, I'm okay with it. Seeing that my personal site is on SiteGround, yes. I optimize my images, you don't need to touch me. <laughs> <laughs> People generally ask me before that, so I don't just uh, hang around and optimize our customers' websites if, um, if they don't ask for it, <laughs> at least, without telling them. That would be creepy. Anyone else? 
Oh, nice. You're all performance experts. OK. I knew you'd have a question. You were mentioning backup at the end. Um, besides some like hosting level operations, do you know any good database backup plugin solution for WordPress you could think of? MySQL dump dash u username dash p password the name of the file. No, sorry, that symbol and the name of the file <laughs> on a cron job. Uh, rather than that, I would, I would, of course, I would say Backup Buddy, WordPress. Uh, there are a couple of um, uh, free ones available. Just, just pick something that doesn't time out with your database. But and WPC OI is great for that too because it allows you to just just WP DB export and name your file, and you can link that to a cron job and do it weekly. And it's, it supports bash, so you can add variable for timestamps, and you can add it into a broader script to delete the fifth and the sixth copies, because you will keep, of course, four of them, at least. And it's it's really a nice way to, to organize it without having to depend on, on a plugin or on your hosting provider, per se. Anyone else? OK. What, what are the first thing to look into when you have a high time to first byte uh, time? Like the you showed the waterfall diagram. Uh, what you have to look is where your where is your hosting server? Uh, are you using a CDN provider for that? And what's uh, and probably look at the DNS service too. So. That, that's pretty much it. Ch check out the server. Uh, usually, it's either a loaded server if you have uh, slow first byte response time, or it's a networking issue. Those are the, the two usual suspects to blame. Anyone else? Come on. OK, thank you very much.